And now for the sponsor perspective session of the program. We are joined by Kevin Self, Senior Vice President of Strategy, Business Development, and Government Relations at Schneider Electric in conversation with Jason Jedlinski, Publisher and General Manager of The Hill. Thrilled to be here today with Kevin Self from Schneider Electric. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. So American infrastructure is not just crumbling or outdated, it's really under assault like never before given climate change. I'm wondering if you can talk about how the United States must design and build differently um, as resilience and decarbonization get accelerated in this new policy environment. Yeah, thanks for the question. And to your point, this is a once in a generation opportunity we have in front of us. Uh, maybe you can go back to World War II and, and what was built then. Uh, but obviously the changes so many years later is a great opportunity for us to build something that's much more everlasting into the future. Uh, as you know, we've continued to kick this can down the road for multiple years, multiple decades. Uh, and it's absolutely critical that we get it right now. Uh, China's infrastructure spending has been 10 times ours. Uh, in many aspects, they're eating our lunch. And often infrastructure is thought of as concrete and steel. And we think a little bit differently than that at Schneider Electric. We actually think, as we think of infrastructure and building smart infrastructure, that electric and digital is the recipe for a more resilient and more sustainable world. Electric, because it makes energy green, and it's also the most efficient energy vector and the best one for decarbonization. Digital, because it makes the invisible visible. You can't measure what you don't know. And it also eliminates waste and it also drives huge efficiencies. So as we think of the future, we think of one that's much more digital and much more electric. One proof point is we waste about 65% of all generated energy and 6 billion gallons of treated water a day. We only have to think back to a couple of weeks ago and still ongoing in Jackson, Mississippi. And the fact that there's infrastructure in the US in the year 2022 is not able to deliver for its citizens. It sounds like when you mentioned digital, you're really talking about the transparency that brings um, more than any other benefit, right? Yeah, yeah, I am, and it's interesting. We've we've had a I've heard a number of conversations as people talk about all this infrastructure money, and they harken back to 2008, and they talk about we were looking for shovel ready jobs, and then I've heard people talk about well, not shovel ready, let's make it shovel worthy. We want to put another twist on it, and we want to talk about make sure that it's digitally developed first, so that before we put uh, shovel number one in the ground, we've looked at the digital twin of what we're building out optimizing the system so that we're truly devising something that's going to last us for decades into the future. You know, it's interesting that all of us are walking around with these mini computers, cameras, phones in our pockets that has really digitized our personal lives. And we think there's a great opportunity to provide that into what we do during the day and how our infrastructure is developed going forward. Well, with that in mind, let's talk about supply chain. Uh, still certainly top of mind for businesses and consumers as we approach the holiday season, and I'm sure we'll be talking about it into next year. Um, besides the scrutiny on our ports and, and supply chain challenges, um, modernization goes right in line with that digital first mindset you're talking about. How's your team at Schneider uh, approaching that and where do you see that going? Yeah, no, to, to your point, I think, look at over time, over years and decades, we've optimized supply chains from a financial aspect, maybe not as much as from a resilience aspect. Uh, and we are very engaged in the redevelopment of uh, supply chains across this, this country. We're actually doing work right now at the port of Long Beach uh, in California, which is the second busiest port in, in the U.S. alongside the port of Los Angeles. And we're working to convert all their cargo handling equipment to zero emissions technologies by 2030. So to bolster resilience, we deployed a microgrid to power key buildings and help achieve a zero emission operational footprint. The microgrid will produce 520 megawatt hours annually, reducing the port's resilience or reliance on diesel backup generators. And the microgrid allows the seaport, which handles $200 billion of cargo a year to collect, forecast and automatically optimize operations while also driving greater safety. 
So we continue to see the electrification of ports is a critical opportunity and aspect of doing things differently into the future than we had in the past. So competing in the global economy requires resilient infrastructure and microgrids are a great key component to make that work. It's also critical to think about those communities that live around the ports. We had had a conversation with a local congresswoman and what she wanted to talk about first on the port of Long Beach wasn't what was happening in the port, but it's the fact that the air quality for the neighborhoods surrounding the port, which are low to moderate income, is much cleaner today than it was in the past. And so there's also benefits for the communities and the neighborhoods that surround all of this infrastructure. Let's talk about manufacturing. I know the uh, new Inflation Reduction Act is really focused on onshoring manufacturing and bringing more of those operations uh, back domestically to the United States. Um, how do you think policymakers and businesses should think about the next two to three years uh, as we look to bring more of that back onshore? I think we have a great opportunity to optimize the systems going forward. And it's interesting as people think about energy, I think we naturally think about the supply side first. And at Schneider Electric, we always focus demand side. You really can't develop your equilibrium equation until you balance supply and demand. And so taking the example of uh, a glass manufacturer, uh, your factory runs around the clock as it has been for 23 years, which happens to be the average age of U.S. manufacturing facility. And back then, right, everyone was on dial-up. And that's why you're still doing manual paperwork to track equipment data. Not only that, but your electric utility bills have been eating into your budget, now accounting for 35% of OPEX. But unless you have the visibility, you're unaware of this. And so your CEO is setting emission reduction targets and to cut your energy waste and increase operational efficiency, you have to find a way to modernize your facility. So how are you gonna do it? We actually have a great example in Lexington, Kentucky, it's one of our facilities that is 60 plus years old. And a couple of years ago, it received designation as a lighthouse factory, one of the few in the world to receive this. And what we're able to do is make it smarter. We're able to reduce, uh, 20, we saw 20% reduction in mean time to repair, 3.5% year over year energy savings, and a 5% reduction in downtime. Once again, it's making the invisible visible, to ensure the great engineers that exist in this country, the data to understand how to optimize a system in front of them. It's, it's a powerful story of doing well by doing good. Um, great business outcomes from being mindful of some of these needs as well. Now you brought up the recent events in Mississippi, uh, but failure of water infrastructure just keeps making headlines, even going back to Flint a few years ago, um, and water shortages across the West. How has the federal government adapted since the first Flint headlines? Um, and what does the future of water waste treatment look like? How, how does it protect and serve the public? Yeah, talk about the best example of making the invisible visible. Um, we are. We're in the midst of a once-in-a-generation federal investment in infrastructure, and the, obviously the bipartisan bill alone is going to be investing $54 billion into water and wastewater systems. And you brought up the Michigan examples, the other examples down south, uh, what's happening in Jackson. You even look out west, where there's a lack of water at this point. So it's finally the point where we really need to be thinking about how we utilize this. And the federal investment's been urgently needed is we're also wasting 6 billion gallons of treated water a day. And an example we have, we Schneider are close partners with a company called Aviva. And they had an example of a couple of years ago where a small municipality uh, in the southern part of the U.S. Uh, thought that, uh, that they had a natural spring under one of their residents' properties. And lo and behold, what was happening is every day they were losing one third of their treated water. They thought it was a natural spring. It was their wasted water going down the pipes. They were about to spend $20 million on an investment that was unnecessary. And so once again, by bringing in the digital technologies and ensuring that we are devising and building things going forward where we have great visibility, we're able to make them smarter and make them much more long lasting than they would be otherwise. There's other examples, the city of Phoenix, water reclamation facility serves 1.7 million customers, 
but the infrastructure is aged and decentralized. So city planners are uh, looking to modernize the systems and create new installation programs for wastewater facilities. More examples across the country. We are very actively working to ensure once again, that as we build things, we're building it looking forward over the next couple of decade, decades versus building it as we might have in the 1990s or 2000s. I really appreciate some of these examples of how Schneider Electric is helping lead the way and how data is helping us make those better than shovel ready uh, decisions about infrastructure investments in the United States. Uh, once again, Kevin Self, SVP of Strategy, Business Development and Government Relations for Schneider Electric. Thank you again for taking time with us today. And thanks for having me. Thanks again to Jason and Kevin Self, Senior Vice President, Strategy, Business Development and Government Relations at Schneider Electric.